The Dueling 612's transceiver uh, is now complete and uh, I've added uh, several uh, mods to the board which I'll go over. I've also updated the software in the Park uh, SigGen to be used to control the uh, radio and I'll also go through that as well. So going from left around to right I'll go through all the boards. So the first uh, mod here is basically a very simple um, low pass filter. It's basically a it's basically an inductor. You can see the, the inductor there with a capacitor and that just forming a low pass filter to allow audio frequencies to pass and block any RF that this cable may pick up because I've got quite a long length of cable here and uh, the cable is shielded and I do have the shield grounded but I, I just put this in as an extra precaution to uh, filter out any uh, frequencies uh, RF frequencies coming in uh, across the audio. The next mod is the amplifier board here, the RF preamp board and that's uh, basically a uh, 3904, 2N3904 a uh, simple uh, amp. It's got a pot which controls the gain. The next mod is the S meter mod. Before I had a little simple detector circuit here to act as the S meter and that didn't work very well so I had to uh, put an amplifier and what I did I took um, a mod for the micro bit X uh, for a S meter circuit which was uh, published on the um, the micro bit X blog spot uh, website and it's basically a, a LM386 amplifier which takes uh, the input in amplifies it I have got a pot here which attenuates the signal going into the amplifier and then at the end of the amplifier it's got a little diode detector here and a capacitor and that is being fed to the Arduino uh, ADC and so the, Ar the Arduino will measure the voltage on that pin and convert that to a uh, S unit. The next mod I've added is a bridge and uh, here's uh, the input and output and uh, basically it's got two transformers, two detectors uh, that measure the reverse voltage and the forward voltage and I've got those two voltages being fed to uh, um, two other ADC pins on the um, Arduino. So uh, uh, pin A0, A1 and A2 are used to measure uh, those analog voltages. So based on the voltages coming out of uh, out of the uh, bridge here I can determine the uh, the power being trans transmitted as well as the S SWR. The last mod here which I've added is another amplifier which is going between the bandpass filter and the power amp and that's bringing the signal up uh, to make sure that the power amp could put out 5 watts. The software I've written for the uh, Park SigGen uh, turns the Park SigGen into a controller for the Dueling 612's and the way I've got it configured right now is on the uh, 4x20 LCD it uh, provides you with an in indicator showing whether it's uh, receiver transmit mode it's giving you the VFO frequency, VFO A frequency. Uh, it's telling you the mode here. It's LSB. It's giving you the S meter here in terms of our bar chart, and then it's giving you a numeric reading of the uh, the S reading. Then it's giving you the frequency for VFO B, which you can swap between the two. It's uh, telling you the uh, band we're on, and then here this is giving you menu options. And so from the menu options there, you can go in and configure, you could fine-tune the, uh, for example, the LO oscillator, 
the uh, the local oscillator, the beat frequency oscillator. You could do you could fine tune it. You can uh, adjust the uh, configure the S meter reading, configure the power meeting, power meter reading, and uh, also uh, calibrate the SI 5351. To facilitate transmit, there is a digital pin connection here that's going to this header here and basically what that's doing that uh, provides a voltage which turns on this transistor and shorts this relay uh, conducting it so it shorts it to ground uh, the transistor shorts to ground and uh, therefore it uh, connects uh, uh, completes the circuit for the relay and the relay switches between uh, um, switches power between receive and transmit and uh, what I have is another digital pin connected to a push button and that's the push to talk button so this could be connected to the push to talk of the mic but currently right now it's just connected to this uh, push button and if I was to push the button you'll see it's moved over to transmit and you'll see there's an SWR reading and uh, that's the transmitted power so right now it's showing one bar it's transmitting one watt so I'm gonna go ahead and feed a tone into the microphone so right there it's showing I've got a good SWR and it's showing I'm transmitting five watts and I have the transmitter connected to a dummy load so I should be getting a one-to-one -one, uh, SWR and that's uh, pretty close. Now if we go to my scope and we look at the voltage that's being entered into the um, the bridge you'll see the voltage here it's uh, 48 volts roughly 47 48 volts and uh, that means it's uh, right about uh, 5 watts coming out of the uh, the amplifier. To control the software we would use the standard uh, controls that is provided with the Park SIGGEN a rotary encoder and two push buttons and the way I've configured it is the rotary encoder allows you to change the frequency or change a uh, menu uh, option so it allows you to change the frequency or change lower sideband to upper sideband or change the BFO frequency change the band or change the menu option here it does not change uh, the receive and uh, a receive to transmit this push button here allows you to cycle through the menu options so for example right now it's the cursors flashing on RX uh, TX mode because I pushed the uh, push to talk button and uh, one problem you'll notice that uh, when I go back to uh, there it's in transmit mode when I go back to receive you'll notice it takes some time for that S meter to bleed back down and that's just a function of the capacitor that I have here that is part of the uh, detector circuit that capacitor has got to be fine-tuned to um, allow it to bleed down uh, quicker so if I was to push the button the select button you'll notice I switched over to uh, LSB USB and if I turn the rotary encoder see I can go CW mode which doesn't work by the way CW mode doesn't work there's USB LSB and if I push the select button again takes me over to the VFO B and if I change the rotary encoder I could change the frequency there if I push the select button again it takes me over to the band and there I can select a different band right now I've only got it configured for 40 meters but uh, it's fairly straightforward to have it work on the other bands and if I hit the select button again I go to the menu option and if I turn the rotary encoder there I can adjust I can uh, correct the BFO frequency so I can adjust the BFO frequency up to I think from 
uh, 1 hertz all the way to 4 kilohertz, plus or minus. I can adjust the local oscillator, the LO frequency. I can calibrate the SI5351. I can change the baseline for the, uh, the S meter. I can add a correction to the S meter. That allows me to basically fine tune it so I will get exactly an S9 signal. Uh, there I could do a forward power correction. So that's how I, I would calibrate uh, the power that gets displayed. And there's a reverse power calibration which does nothing at that point. Uh, so that menu option could even be removed but it doesn't measure and display the reverse power. And then finally a factory reset which puts uh, the system back to the first time software load uh, values. So one interesting thing is if you hit the select button and you go over to receive transmit by by pushing the second button the execute button that's actually a push to talk and that will only work when uh, you've cursored over when you're in the RX uh, mode there when the cursor is in RX so I added that as a feature in case you didn't have a push to talk at least it's easy to engage the uh, radio to have it uh, generate uh, switch over to uh, TX. So the execute button basically does exactly what it does. It executes a function. So if we were to go over to let's just say we're in VFO A, the cursor's there, the rotary encoder can change the value and notice the S meter pops up when I change the value and that's because of that click. I've got I've got to go in and change the SI5351 library so I don't have that click that's on my to-do list but if I was to push the execute button I swap between VFOB and VFOA notice VFOB is now at the top VFOA is at the bottom I push the execute button again and I swap between the VFOs and uh, if I was to go over to lower sideband if I was to use a rotary encoder and say go to the upper sideband I would have to hit the execute button to make it change over so right there it's changed over to upper sideband and uh, let me put it back to lower sideband once again push the execute button and the same thing goes for the band I'm at the band I can uh, go over and change for example right now I've got it programmed for 40 60 80 there's uh, 15 17 and 20 as well okay so if we go over to to let's go over to 20 and I push the execute button notice it changes the frequency to 14 megahertz so there it's in um, uh, it's uh, in the 20 meter band and uh, still have to fine tune it to to get it to work put a, a proper low pass filter band pass filters and so forth but uh, it should theoretically work the next step now is to create a second band pass filter for 40 meters right now I have one and when I go from receive to transmit I have to swap it so I have to create a, a uh, second bandpass filter which will be used for the receive chain and at that point I could potentially make a con contact I still have to find do some fine-tuning on the software but uh, right now it's uh, it's uh, it's good good to go at least for uh, 40 meters